Esther, Saul and Samuel and Daniel, along with the prodigal son in Luke the 15th chapter, they wore jewelry. However, in each case, the jewelry had a functional use. Signet rings were used to transact business. Crowns, chains, and bands were used to convey legal authority. The high priest's breastplate of precious stones had a similar, similar function in Israel's worship. And jewelry also had a functional use as a wedding token in Bible times, according to Genesis 24, Isaiah 61, and Jeremiah 2. Because the Bible does not condemn these various types of functional jewelry in the Old Testament, we also maintain a balanced position by making allowance for a minimal amount of functional jewelry, such as wedding rings, wristwatches, hair clips, etc., while maintaining God's desired prohibition on the jewelry for that its sole purpose is just adornment. Now, the New Testament... Boy, I bet y'all glad I'm about done with this teaching. Well, you hang around till next year. She'll be coming around the mountain when she comes. Yeehaw! <laughs> Boy, that's country, isn't it? The apostolic admonitions of Peter and Paul are even more explicit than Old Testament commands. The New Testament repeatedly contrasts the inner adorning of a meek and quiet spirit with the outward adorning of the body by elaborate hairstyles, gold, pearls, and costly attire. It is always speaking of two different lifestyles. Always. You cannot separate the outer man from the inner man in the eyes of God. Not two modes of the same lifestyle but two completely different lifestyles. 1 Peter 3, 3 through 4 says, Whose adorning, let it not be that outward adorning of plaiting the hair which is weaving gold into their braid, and of wearing of gold or of putting on of apparel. But let it be the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit which is in the sight of God of great price. 1 Timothy 2, 9 and 10. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel with shamefacedness. And we really talked about what shamefacedness was and sobriety was last week. Not with broided hair. Same word, same principle. They would weave jewels intricately through their hair. Sometimes they would stand up like five feet or something full of, of gold and jewels. Or gold or pearls or costly array. That is, that is buying clothes simply because it's the coolest brand and it's the most expensive. But, verse 10, which becometh women professing godliness with good works. So the Bible very clearly differentiates between the person with the right inner man, how they look on the outside, and the person that's got the wrong inner man and how they look on the outside. Um, both Peter and Paul, I'm going to hurry through this because I want to get this last part and I want to get these babies baptized and y'all are making me nervous. <laughs> I can baptize them and I won't be... We crazy things happen in that baptistry, don't they, Jamie? <laughs> you know, we baptized Sister Wilma Sunday night and she was worried about the cold water and then she didn't want to get out. <laughs> she just messed around and caught the Holy Ghost again in the water. Amen. Both Peter and Paul expect women to adorn themselves to some degree as long as it is in the proper fashion that the Bible speaks of. God does not condemn natural ornaments. If so, he could have designed all fruits and vegetables to all be the same color. But the nature itself has a variety of color, so that would give us not only food, but also beauty. God does not expect us to be drab or colorless or, or just, well, I just can't wear nothing. I've heard people say that before after teaching holiness. It came to me around the mulberry bush, but, you know. And the truth of the matter is, I talked to somebody the other day. I, I, I had lunch with a buddy of mine. And, and we were talking about, about his wife. And I'm telling you what. If women would smile more, they would need a whole lot less help looking pretty. Because I was tell, he's talking about his wife having a few issues with things. And I said, let me tell you something. When she smiles, her whole face changes. It's the most beautiful thing in the world. I said, she's gorgeous. Gorgeous. 
when she smiles. And let me tell you something that's sad. This is really sad, and I know you've seen it before. But when more mature ladies, that means the ones you call old when they're behind their back, are still trying, are still trying to fit that same criteria. And they'll smear that stuff plumb up underneath their nose. Y'all, I know y'all have seen that before, trying to make their lips fat. You know, and man, that's, that's just sad. That is sad because they think they have to. It's a way of life. And I, I can't tell you the times when I was coming up and, and I, you, you all know that I... That I I, I didn't always walk the straight and narrow, but I tell you, all of my buddies, all of my buddies thought the Pentecostal girls was the best looking in the whole town. Without exception. Brother Richard even prayed for the Lord to send him a Pentecostal girlfriend when he didn't know nothing about the Pentecostal church. <laughs> you don't have to be drab and dowdy. You don't. Because you're pretty like God made you. Right. Yes. I remember, Mama remember this. I don't know if Blaine's still alive or not. And I think I talked about this the other day. But he, he, had, he had only been married to his wife a few years. They were both on up in age in his second or third marriage. But he had never seen his wife without her makeup on. And he, he gave the impression that he didn't want to. And I'll remember very, very vividly, Brother Pete, Daddy asked him, Why, Blaine, what makes you think you're so pretty you don't need a little help? <laughs> How arrogant is that for a fella to say, I don't want to see my wife without no makeup on? Well, that's as belittling of a comment as you could ever make about a lady. I'd break out the rolling pin in a New York minute on him. Okay. Both Peter and Paul taught us that you can dress nice and look nice, put some effort into your appearance. But there must be a consistency between the inward life and the outward appearance of a Christian. To pretend to come humbly before God while we are adorned in a way we know he doesn't like is in fact hypocrisy. Let me talk about makeup a few minutes. The painting of the face and eyes is directly connected to vanity. Period. According to our text, women should adorn, cosmeo themselves with shamefacedness and sobriety, which is the total opposite of drawing attention to yourselves. It deals with attitude and manifests itself in respect, reverence, self-restraint, modesty, and or bashfulness toward men. Here's where makeup's designed for. Makeup is designed to make women more attractive to men. It is designed to accentuate the sensuality in the woman, which is in direct contrast to what God desires for the chaste, modest, and natural attractiveness for women. The Lord does not want women to be on the prowl. Amen. Bless God. Doesn't matter, fellas, if we like it or not. The Lord never intended for women to go out trolling. Amen. Come on now. God didn't intend for it to happen. He didn't intend, men, for us to fall in love with something that's not even real. Amen. That's right. Oh, goodness. No. <laughs> Sister Margaret's fixing to say. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he couldn't make his mind up, could he? <laughs> I thought Sister Margaret was fixing to ask me about getting her belly button pierced or something. <laughs> I'm just teasing. <laughs> So 
Sister Michelle was drawn up thinking about the same thing. <laughs> Sister Terry's glad she's sitting over yonder. <laughs> Boy, I tell you what, this is a, the, hey, that's a good thing. That's a good thing right there now. Y'all walking in territory I know something about now. Sister Summers was my babysitter when I was a little boy, and she loved me too. Let me tell you, I don't think. She made me a quilt. I had it on my bed when the house burnt. Uh, patchwork quilt, boy, it was a neat little old thing, man. She made mama a pillow that was wide as the whole bed. Made a body pillow before there was such a thing at the store. She probably could have got a lot of money off of it and stuff. God intended for women to have a natural adornment. Society has replaced it with an unnatural one, which is makeup or cosmetics. Man, I, I, I really don't want to say this, but I think I need to. And please nobody get angry with me. Please don't get upset with me, but it's just truth. Cosmetics and the painting of the face is, is something that was instituted in the prostitute area is because the red lips, the red face, the hooded eyes with mascara are all designed to give a woman the appearance of a sexual arousal. Um, that's a fact. That's not something that I'm just telling you. It is, it is to be sexually provocative. And uh, all exhibit a state of, of the way that a woman would be. It's, it's for attraction. And uh, how, how many of you remember Logan Darty? He wrote a wonderful thing on Facebook here. About, uh, about two or three weeks ago about this, and he called it fake up through the whole thing. And, and you all know Logan, he marches to the beat of a different drummer, okay? I mean, it's just the way he is. He's a great kid. He's a great kid. But he, uh, uh, biblically, the prophets are consistent in their patrol of a backslidden Israel as an unfaithful woman decked with jewelry and makeup. Hosea 2 and 13, this is one of them. And I will visit upon her the days of Balaam wherein she burned incense to them, false gods again. And she decked herself with earrings and her jewels and she went after her lovers and forgot me, saith the Lord. Jeremiah 4 and 30, and when thou art spoiled, what wilt thou do? Thou, though thou clothest, clothest thyself with crimson, Though thou deckest thee with ornaments of gold, though thou rentest thy face with painting, in vain shall thou make thyself fair. Thy lovers will despise thee, they will seek thy life. Then Ezekiel 23 and 40, And furthermore, that ye have sent for men to come from far, unto whom a messenger was sent. And lo, they came for whom thou didst watch thyself, paintest thy eyes, and deckest thyself with ornaments. And then there's, we're going to bring her up one more time, and then we're going to let her go back to the grave. Then there's the ever so well known and spoken of Jezebel. Now Jezebel's look verified her spiritual standing and her vision which was to seduce Israel into idolatrous worship. Now her husband Ahab has been killed in battle and Jehu is apparently the new king. And he's coming to visit Jezebel. And uh, so 9 and 22, Joram and Jehu talking about Jezebel. And it came to pass when Joram saw Jehu that he said, Is it peace, Jehu? And he answered, What peace? So long as the whoredoms of thy mother Jezebel and her witchcrafts are so many, there will be no peace till we get rid of Jezebel. Verse 30. And when Jehu was come to Jezreel, Jezebel heard of it. She heard Jehu was on the way. So she painted her face and tired her head, means she wrapped it with gold and jewels, and looked out a window. I don't even know if I need to say any more. Brother Robbie, the, the proper thing to do would have been to receive him in the house. But she got herself all dialed up. And ended up in the window. Now, she was hopefully presenting such a beautiful thing to Jehu. But she didn't know that Jehu despised what she stood for. And there were two eunuchs. 
standing with Jezebel in the window. Now, does anybody know, not know what a eunuch is? Good. I don't have to talk about that then. Make a feller nervous. Jehu was able to have the eunuchs of the castle throw Jezebel down. She tried to be, what's that word, C-O-Q-U-E-T-T-I-S-H, coquettish. That's what she was, she was getting her flirt on. Jezebel had her groove on, so to speak. And Jehu looked up and he told the eunuchs, throw her down. Now, Brother Ray, the reason why the eunuchs weren't affected by Jezebel is they had lost their desire for women. Her, her wiles didn't have any effect on them. And the Bible tells us that she fell down on the floor and died out of that wind and died and the dogs came and ate her body except for the palms of her hands and the soles of her feet. Now there's a type there too. The Lord wanted everything of Jezebel gone. And then in 1 Peter 3, 1 Timothy 2, we find that the standards of New Testament adornment are even more stringent than the Old Testament. 1 Peter 3, 1 Timothy 2. There's no longer in our society a negative connotation associated with jewelry and makeup in our culture. But our desire must be to please God rather than man. Society has no influence on the principles of God. Culture has no influence on the principles of God. Now the Bible is very clear what the Bible thinks about makeup, jewelry, the distinction of the sexes, costly array, so on and so forth. These things in our world today, they still highlight sensuality, they encourage pride, they affect the wearer and the viewer, how many of you fellas, I, I used to work in people's houses. Brother Johnny and I worked in people's houses. And do you know that I've had ladies apologize to me for coming to the door without any makeup on? And say, I'm sorry that I look like this. First off, I didn't notice nothing. But what kind of a society has taught our people that they're not good enough. There's something sad about that. There's something that, that grips our heart when we, when we see that that's the world we're trying to reach. The truth of the matter is, you get to come here and just be yourself. You don't have to put on airs. You don't have to pretend. You don't have to try to be something that you're not. You don't have to entice nobody. I tell you, I've been teaching my kids. I, we don't know yet if it works or not. They're all still single. But I've been telling them, pray for you who you want God to have you with. Don't try to get a woman or a husband the, the way of the world. I feel sorry for poor little old Carly sometimes because I'm tough on her. I'm tough on her. You know, and she's just like any other little girl. She wants to be pretty. Believe me, I know. That's why I'm so hard on her. But brother David, the Bible just says what the Bible says. And the Bible means what the Bible means. And here's the retarded thing. Is we have been made to feel like that we're weird. But as we preach, and this is going to be my theme for a while, this is a safe place. This is a safe place. I, I knew of a situation recently where a young girl was, was berated for going out without painting her face. I can't believe you let yourself be seen like that. How, how degrading. How degrading. When I stand, and I'm sure I do, with a vast majority of men in the world, 
a vast majority, I'm going to say in the 90%, that the best work the Lord ever did was when he made a woman. We know the way God feels about adornment. It's very clear in Scripture. And the spiritual effects upon our society are clear. So tonight, I've got to ask you, what will your response be to the Word of God? I have had a lot of people tell me, I don't understand this. And, and there's nobody, nobody, no way, no shape, no how.